freshly organized and ready to dangle. Happy New Year and welcome on back to the channel, Fish and Freaks. Today we're taking out the Silver Bullet. We're gonna be doing some wintertime ledge fishing. We're gonna have a catch and cook and we're gonna see if this new filet knife that I got is worth the money. So welcome on back. Let's hit the water and get it going. There are our victims. There they are right there, y'all. I gotta get that lure down there. Kinda passing through, they're on the move. That's what I love about this spinning rig. So I can just quickly get that baby down there. And when it's at the bottom. Since this is winter time, I'm gonna go a little bit slower than I normally do. Slow lifts, I just got hit. In the winter when the water's cold, like in the 40s, 49 right now, I like to give pauses on my spoons. I just got hit again. When it's uh, when it's really cold, there he hit it all while it was just sitting there. Oh, we came off. Their mouths are also harder, so you want to use sharp hooks in the winter. Who's going to be the first fish to be caught? 2021. Want a nice juicy one, please. Might need to switch colors because they're they're bumping it, but not really eating it good. Oh my, the graph. It is exploding. We're switching up to gold here. Go! Yeah, come on now. Don't just, yeah, eat it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. man, they're just being little finuglers. That's a new word I haven't even used. I'm gonna go with classical spoon just to make sure we're not missing the program. Oh gosh, connected on the spoon. First drop a roo in the 2021. Fish is not a big one. Wow. Well, if that's the size down there, I don't, I don't want to have that. I want those big winter monsters. There's like one down there, and he, he was even tapping it. There he is. Wow. Bam. They want that just do nothing presentation. Oh yeah, the old cold fighter. Hi. How deep are they? Uh, about 28. 28. Pretty deep. Pretty deep. I'm looking for them on the on these ledges out here. Yeah. So, I mean, there that's where the shad are. So, what's going on, little man? Yeah, I just like to take my spoon, get it down there to the bottom, and they're pretty much glued to the bottom right now. Thanks, good luck. Yeah, you too. Got him. Got him on that blade. Solid one. Oh, a largey. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh, no way. I'm caught on my other spoon. No, it came off. Okay. There we go. Large mouth. And that is why I love the blade bait, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, <laughs> fun times. Look at that deep, cold bass. Pale, got red lips. Cold one. I would say one of my favorite winter techniques besides throwing jerk baits like deep clear water is to get out on those uh, ledges and you can do this like a, a, a visual ledge that you can see throw up towards the bank and work it out like a stair step oh there's a fish just like that that's a white bass he's kicking you can work it down that ledge or you can do it, do how I'm doing it right now. Just kind of fan casting out on a flat that's off a ledge. That one got it on the move. I got a fatty and then I got kind of a regular one. 
looks like we got oh yeah we got some white bass right underneath this right now so i'm just going to drop down here just really having to pay attention to the electronics got him on the on the little little guy it's a keeper but i'm gonna throw him back basically just keeping hogs hogs only here looks like that school is already moving on give it one more drop see if i can snag one and then i'm gonna fan cast again there's one might have snagged him felt a nibble and it pulled up got him got him in the chin oh that's a pagan that is a big white bass that's the kind we want right there mega eaters yeah oh gosh he's so big he almost looks like a hybrid Nope, got him right in the mouth. Woo! That is a couple of golden crispies right there. Looks like that school's gone, so I'm gonna fan cast again. Big old white bass. Well, he's skinny. Skinny. Throwing him back, fatties only. Oh, got it right there under the boat. I feel some head shakes. What do we have? That is going to be the old white bass and a dandy. the old eater McGee nice little new year day we got going here folks fun times as Emmy would say I'm thinking we got enough to make us a couple of fish sandwiches y'all good way to start off the new year kind of a slow bite typical winter deal you know they were feeding a little bit and we got a little bonus large now it's been a while since i put some grease in the pot and i always enjoy white bass in the winter when their their meat is just more i don't know just tastes better it tastes better than like a summer one you know they get a little stanky the dangle and woodcraft cave where a man can be a man i kind of like that slow go that slogan? <laughs> Lo slogan. Slogan. Mix the two up. I probably spend like 30 minutes to an hour uh, when I'm home at night. I just sit in here. I organize tackle. I do a lot of, um, I love knives. As many of you know, one of these days I'm going to do some, some knife videos. But I do a lot of my, my sharpening and uh, just outdoor tool organization and stuff like that. Uh, recently just built a new section onto my uh, tool area over the Christmas, uh, New Year holiday, little section to hold my drill and driver sets and just extra tools and, and stuff like that. Built myself a couple of quivers, little uh, D-rings on them just to, to hang on the trees outside when I'm shooting arrows and just organize the arrows in here because I literally just had them scattered throughout my, my tackle. What we came in here to discuss is this right here. Now normally if I only have four fish like I have today, I'm going to take one of my fixed blades like this baby right here, just a nice little fixed blade fillet knife. I like the feel uh, when I'm not doing a whole lot of fish. When you got a bunch of them and you just got to get down to business, you don't have a lot of time. You got to go with electric, uh, you know, 20, 25 fish, uh, you get 15 crappie, it gets a little old when you're trying to get to... Uh, other things throughout the day, you know, it takes a long time. So typically what I've used is the standard Rapala fillet knife. I think a lot of people have um, the, the electric one. Bubble Blade, I've seen them, they make some, some pretty good fixed blade products. Uh, I've used some of them before, but I saw that they came out with a uh, electric fillet knife 
and they have uh, a cordless model, which is what I have right here. And I said, man, I gotta give that sucker a shot. This setup that I have right here with the two rechargeable lithium ion batteries and the full blade set with the case and everything was like, I wanna say 125 bucks. It might've been a little bit more, but got it off Amazon. Uh, just for comparison, I think I paid the the same thing, maybe even a little bit more, uh, for this custom fillet knife right here, with uh, I think that's CPM 154 steel. So, you know, a nice little custom fillet knife. Of course, it means more to me, obviously, and this is you know an heirloom that I can pass down and everything like that. Uh, I love knives, so I'm willing to spend that much money. But this is normally, I mean, this, this is a lot for an electric fillet knife. So hopefully it's uh, just worth the coin. Um, certainly feels good. The quality feels really good. I like that rubber grip and everything, but let's put it to the test. A nine inch flex, a nine inch stiff, a 12 inch stiff. Uh, just sounds weird saying that on camera. The stiff have a thicker blade. We'll do, we'll do the nine inch flex. Looks sharp, looks like it's coated in some sort of uh, non-stick material. All right, she's ready to roll, no cords. You can see the flex on this one's really good. So we'll see how this one does on some Mondo white bass. Going to make them golden crispies. So they've been on ice uh, overnight. Uh, I think I am gonna play around with the different blade types just to kind of see here. Um, the only thing we're not going to be able to check is the um, the longevity because we only have four. But... Slides through nice. Now this is where the flex comes in handy. Oh uh, wow! Okay, we went right through the spot. <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp. Common mistake. Redirect that. I don't know if I really like the flex for this. I mean, it is really flexible. Came out pretty good. Not a whole lot wasted besides my boo boo. Alright, try not to boo boo this side here. Okay, this one definitely not my best work. Staying on. Look at the auto lock. No, it's just staying on. Yeah, that's dangerous. Hang on. What the heck is going on here, little buddy? This is going off right now. Okay, I don't know what is going on there. It's not in a lock position. <laughs> okay, uh, well, Bubba, we may have an issue here. Uh, I'm gonna say that is not safe. There's a lock button right here. And when you lock that, that holds it in place, but what's happening is it's just locked in on its own. Um, I don't know how to get that out of there. Um, it's just going. Well, while this thing is in a, such a cutting mood, I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the nine inch stiff in, which still has quite a bit of flex, and we're gonna see how that goes. Cut the rib cage out with a standard knife. Your standard fixed blade will never let you down. It might be a little slower, but it'll never let you down. I cut through this one too. Totally butchering these things. Wow. I am not enjoying this, to be honest with you.
That's the worst job I've ever done on a white bass, ever. I mangled it. Okay, I'm gonna set this one to the side for a second. I'm gonna have to use my standard fillet knife on this. I'll try this one more time. This is a big one right here. Okay. Right there. Okay. That's a good fillet. Female, you can see the row inside of there. Take my battery off. I'm gonna unscrew this thing and figure out what the problem is when I'm done with all this, but yeah, right now I'm just I'm just not impressed. Go get this row to the chickens. Okay, my little darlings. Ugh. Yummy, protein. All right, y'all. It is now time for my favorite part, and that is eating the golden crispies and popping a little beverage midday. Check out that special koozie right there. I have no idea if these are still available, but pretty cool. If you want to get yourself a little collector's edition, the squad faces. So here's what we got. I've got a, I believe this is a 12 inch uh, cast iron. It might be a 10. I. I don't know, but it's just your standard cast iron with a white tail on the back of it. All right, that's why I chose it, you know. We're gonna put that on the flame with the burner outside here on the, uh, the old Camp Chef sidekick. And over here, I've got my fillets. I've patted them dry, and I've also added just some all-purpose flour, a couple of scoops of that, and I have some wing dust, some Cosmos Q wing dust. I have lemon pepper, and I have um, buffalo. I think I'm just going to go straight buffalo and flour. I'm feeling in a spicy mood today. So that's going to be our mix. Show you guys how to do that. This is a simple, easy, just basic shore lunch style fish. The golden crispies that we all love. Add a few cups of oil. This is literally oil that I have used and reused. I got this out of my big tub. This, this oil is probably six months old and I just keep filtering it so you can actually reuse your oil. Kick that gas on, add a little heat. Got our flour here. We're going to add our wing dust. Obviously this is meant for wings but it, it's a real nice fine powder and you can use it for this too. A little bit goes a long way. Oh yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's spicy. Once I got used to that fillet knife, I was able to get a couple of decent ones. The first ones I definitely butchered. The thing is uh, just a carving machine. So I'm going to go straight into the flour and then into the grease. I've patted these dry, by the way, so there's no more water on them. So that flour is going to stick to them nice and, nice and good. Make sure we get a nice... Get them in there, real coated. Just a good old thin layer. You can thicken it up. You can add milk. You can, uh, you know, do egg, whatever you want to thicken up your uh, your flour coat, your your uh, your coating. But I like mine pretty thin. You can test your oil temp. I like mine around 300 to 350. 350 is optimum, but. You can use a little flour, just old school test. If it starts sizzling, buzz, bubbling, when that flour hits it, you know it's ready. So it is. Now we're going in. She baby. There's just enough oil in here where I can tell when these things start to float. And when they start to float, they're done. I've got a big industrial size fryer, but when you only have a few fish, this is much easier. Much easier to clean up too. Now this is how I like to start out the new year, y'all. When they're golden, you're golden. Time for extraction. Mm-hmm. 
Lord have mercy, that's some gorgeous golden crispies. Mm-hmm. It's time to dine, y'all. Beautiful golden color on these. I think they turned out really nice. Let's see how that little buffalo wing dust turned out. I can taste it. Unfortunately, y'all, getting over this uh, virus, I don't have my taste buds fully. They're like at 50%, so I can't get the full full indulgence here. I can't really smell a bass right now either, which is unfortunate. But light flour, so you get the full taste of the fish. You get a good texture. There's not a lot of extra just crust and crap. It's healthier that way, too. This formula satisfies every time. Catch your fish, let them sit on ice, cook them the next day. Awesome, man. Whew! Man, what a way to start off the year. The fillet knife, I'm going to have to go to work on. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, screwdriver to it, open it up, and see if I can fix that thing. I just, it needs some getting used to. It's like when you freshly sharpen your chainsaw teeth. You know, you go, you go out and, and it's like sawing through logs like crazy. Um, I got to get used to that feel, but there's really no replacement, in my opinion, for a well-sharpened standard fillet knife. You get more meat off the fish, you get a better feel. I'm going to give the Bubba Blade another shot if it uh, doesn't go into full autopilot. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. This is a nice little fishing warm-up. I am definitely in the fishing mood now, getting prepped, getting ready. And um, I'm ready to tackle all species in 2021. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the action this year. Go ahead and smash the like button too. You know, just give it a good hard thump. Just like that bass is going to hit that jig this year and hopefully get one in. Double digit, baby! <laughs> See you guys on the next adventure. Got her working again. Instead of taking part.